Hello, I'm Nathaniel Bott here with Stephen Olshansky, State News Football Writers, and we're going to preview the Ohio State-Michigan State game on Saturday. Kind of funny how we sit here at 72 degrees outside, and tomorrow it's going to be no more than 40 and a little rain and snow mix. So, you know, last year you look at it, weather played a big part in MSU's victory. Is this what they need? Is this, is this going to give them maybe a, a little better chance to win? I, I mean, it probably increases their chances that both teams, you know, will probably have trouble trying to throw the ball, or, or maybe even there could be a, a good amount of turnovers depending how, you know, wet or slippery it gets out there tomorrow. But you know, last year I think they just had they had the talent where the, everything came together in that game where it seemed like. Um, I don't want to call it a magical game because they've game planned well and whatnot, but you know they had better talent, I thought, and they're more equipped to handle a team like Ohio State. Um, I just think they're underdeveloped now, too underdeveloped to face a you know a, a team that's as talented as Ohio State's been on both sides of the ball, a team that's been as healthy as Ohio State. Yeah, you look at their their offensive line; they've had the same starters since since week one. Uh, JT Barrett's been the quarterback since week one. Defensively. Same starters since week two. The secondary has been the same since week one, and that secondary allowing the least amount of pass um, yards per attempt. They have the most interceptions in the Big Ten. They have the most interception yards by a, a large margin. They've picked off opposing quarterbacks ten times, taken five of them back for touchdowns. So their defense is, you know, putting points on the board. Just you know, and that just absolutely helps the offense. You know, and, and gives Ohio State a lot of momentum. Michigan State, they come in probably Tyler O'Connor is going to be your, your quarterback senior day. For all these senior guys, you know, how, how important is it for them to maybe go out and, you know, in a disappointing season, try to leave Spartan Stadium with, with such a big win? I think almost for the seniors, this is almost like their Super Bowl in a sense. You know, it's their last game at a program that some of them have been here for five years now where they've, um, you know, they've given a lot to this program and won a lot in their time. You know, these guys have won the Rose Bowl together. These guys have won multiple Big Ten championships together. So it kind of sucks for them to you know, have a season like this. But to go out and beat Ohio State, I think would probably – you know, they, they won't forget some of the bad memories, but it definitely helps uh, Helps when you look back. You go, hey, we beat probably the number two team in the country. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, especially for the seniors from Ohio, too, I mean, they've beaten Ohio State before. I think to go out with a winning record against Ohio State mm-hmm. would probably be a, something they would look for, for sure. Yeah, beating Ohio State in the last, you know, since Urban Meyer took over actually is, has been pretty difficult. I think he's only lost five games total. And D'Antonio, one of four coaches, only four coaches in NCAA football to – beat Urban Meyer more than once. He's got a 2-2 two and two record against him. So last two times they've beaten Ohio State, they've been ranked number two in the 2013 Big Ten Championship and in 2015 last year. Does that give them any sort of like extra confidence? And, and you talked to players on Tuesday about kind of that role of spoiler. They got number two Ohio State, then number eight Penn State on the road in their last game. That could really shake up some college football playoff standings and even the Big Ten East standings. Right. Um, I think it, it – as much as they wouldn't admit it, that it's extra motivation that they would do it, um, I, D'Antonio acknowledged it. And he said, yeah, it's probably, you always, there's always something you want to be playing for as a competitor. So I'm sure it's in the back of their minds. And does it give them something added in there? I think so. Um, you know, you would look at it, go, hey, Michigan State can shape the race again for a fourth straight year, even if it's just kind of been inadvertent. You know, obviously they're not going to win it. But, um, yeah, I think it, it does provide an extra motivation. How much, I think, depends on the player. You know, some guys are like Riley Bull is like, I don't care, I'm focused on me this weekend. And then like, other guys are like, yeah, you know, you know I could, uh, you know, I'd rather knock a guy, run, knock a team down a peg or something like that. So, yeah, I talked to Josiah Price about it. You know, he said it, it's not, they're focused on winning and they're focused on their team. They're focused on setting their seniors out the right way. But he did acknowledge it is in the back of some guys' heads, certainly. But, you know, he's more focused on developing those young guys, getting them this kind of in-game experience against the number two team. They're going to be seeing Ohio, a lot of Ohio State in their career. So, so with that, Stephen, Ohio State comes in definitely looking for revenge from that 2015 game where they they could have found themselves in the college football playoff, but the Spartans ruined that for them. What's your prediction for the game? Uh, I think Michigan or with the yeah Michigan State Ohio State uh, comes out and wins this one. I think yeah, with the weather's gonna play a factor, so it wouldn't be as large as I would think. But I think Ohio State probably puts up at least thirty five on them. I'd go like 35, 17, 35, 14, kind of a kind of a game where I think um, J T Barrett kind of does what he did um, in fourteen. If he but with the weather probably can't throw, but he's gonna use his legs and Mike Weber kind of a homecoming for him to play in the state, mm-hmm. so he'll probably. Um, he could run all over him, and the last time a team won a home game was like about ten years ago in yeah, this matchup. So I, I think it's exact year. So yeah, so I can't see I can't see that trend uh, 
you know, uh, ending anytime soon. Yeah, my written preview, I had uh, Ohio State 35, MSU 17, so we're kind of on the same page there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, JT Barrett, you know, he's he's been kind of under the radar, having a, a, an excellent year. Um, with Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, guys like that, he hasn't really gotten that Heisman hype, but, you know, he certainly put up the stats to be in consideration for that. And just their offensive line with the consistency starting the same guys – since week one, and they've been opening up big holes for their running game and protecting JT Barrett to the utmost. I mean, he's only been sacked five times this year. So just that mixed in with the the defense leading almost every single statistical category in the Big Ten, I think it's too much for MSU to overcome. I think senior day, the weather, stuff like that plays in a little bit, but ultimately it's not going to be enough for, for the Spartans to talk to Buckeyes. That'll do it for us. Uh, make sure you stay with our coverage at statenews.com. Follow our live blog during the game. And... Well, this is a kind of a senior day for me, too, yeah, you know. That's true. <laughs> uh, so this will be my last home game as a student covering uh, covering MSU football. So a little yeah. bittersweet for me, but... Congrats I'll, I'll, on a good career, buddy. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I leave it in good hands here so, with, with Mr. Sainz. Two more years with him, so...